dark in here. Oh, I know, I'm on. <coughs> oh. I had to stop and get air in the tire, and that tire was low again. It has a leak, and I forgot my phone, my credit card, driver's license. I just... <coughs> <laughs> yeah, so it has been an interesting morning. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning, church. I'll wait. Oh, it's on now. Good, good morning. Welcome, one and all, especially to those that are watching online. I do have just a couple of announcements. Number one, we want to um, make a notice of the young at heart. They are changing their game plan for this week due to the heat, so it was just changed. You are not going to Pyramid Hill. You're going to meet here at the church at 1130. So please make note of that. If you have friends that were planning on coming, please give them a call and let them know. And we also want to send a special thank you to our cleaning crew. They are hard at work, and we appreciate all that they are doing for us. That is my announcements for today. So I invite you to center your heart as we listen to the prelude and prepare our hearts for worship.
God is love. Abba, Father, God has been and always will be faithful in maintaining a relationship with us. God will never leave us or forsake us from generation to generation. God is faithful. God of our fathers, refresh your people this day. Let us remember your faithfulness and draw upon you for strength, guidance, guidance, and blessing. Bless us, O Lord, and may we in return be a blessing unto others. All praise and glory to you, eternal Father. Let us worship the Lord our God with praise and thanksgiving. And if you could remain standing for our opening song, Faith of Our Fathers. I want to welcome those who are watching online this morning. Happy Father's Day to, to those who are uh, watching. It is good to be in God's house today, and what a glorious morning. Amen? Amen. We come now to the time of, in our service where we celebrate any birthdays or anniversaries. Any birthdays or anniversaries or anything else you want to celebrate. Laura has a birthday on Tuesday. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for this woman, for all that she does. God, I ask that you will be with Laura in the days and months ahead. I pray for her well-being. I pray for her health. I pray, God, that she will enjoy many birthdays of celebrating in Amish country. I know she looks forward to that. So be with her this year, and may she know that she is loved. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. 
today is a special day. Today is Andrea's two year anniversary being here with us. Yep. And I was asked to do honorary prayer for our pastor. But before I do that, we want to invite someone very, very special to come and sit in this chair and be with us. And may it be our Lord and Savior, Jesus mm. Christ, to be sitting here with you, Andrea, mm. in this prayer. And may this prayer not be just only of me, but from our congregation. So if all of you would like to just hold your hand up so we can fill the room, so we can feel mm. the presence of the Lord over Andrea. Father God, Jesus, we come to you this morning and we speak to you in this chair as friends, as, as spiritual leaders, as a family. This is a glory sighting. Mm. This is our glory. Andrea has come to us two years ago and she has helped us walk through many um, hard times fun times, and she's brought so much unity to us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this. We thank you for Andrea. And even in the hard times where Andrea, when, when we step in to walk with the Lord, things happen. Mm -hmm. And Andrea has felt many times arrows come at her, but she's had the love and the confidence of everyone here and that even when she steps out and she visits people and loves on people, her spirit and her aura around her is so wonderfully made. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. So today we want to lift her up, bless her for continued years and years of service to him. And I want to go over that she has shared what our statement is here in Miami Whitewater and the part of the Global Methodist Church, we strive to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. And in Jesus' name, this is what Andrea has done for our church and brought love and unity here. So we thank you, and we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, thank you. And that is uh, a painting from Shirley yeah. Moore Morgan. She's busy. So, Shirley, your hanky is just with it, just a tear right of our, our pastor, Audrey. Audrey yeah. <laughs> right back here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you, church. It has been an honor and it has been a pleasure uh, to serve you. And I hope that we can do this for a long time. Amen. I think now we come to Father's Day celebrations, and if there's any children, can they come up, please, because we need them to help us with this uh, process. <laughs> come on over, Piper. So good to... Yeah, take this up there. <laughs> Go get that to Grandma. Okay. All right. So, are there any visitors today who have traveled uh, to be in worship with their father? Or you don't have to be a visitor. You can be a family. Anybody's traveled to be with their dad today? All right. Yep, Johnny, I think you get the prize. So, uh, go over there. You know Johnny and John, right? He comes with his dad. <clears throat> okay, who has the most great grandchildren? The most great grandchildren. Do we have eight? Anybody have eight? I remember I did this. <laughs> I remember I did this last year, and I was surprised by by the number. It's kind of low. <laughs> no, that's Mother's Day. That's all right. 
This is Father's Day. Okay, eight, seven. Pearls answering for a bunch. <laughs> Count them. Great anybody, grandchildren. Anybody have more than eight? No one raised their hand. Anybody have more than eight? All right, so, Butch, how many do you have? Six. six. Anybody have six? Great grandchildren. All right. Oh, wait, we got a hand back there. Oh, wait, where, I can't see the hand. Richard. Richard. How many you have, Richard? Six. six. All right, we got a tie. So, uh, Butch gets one, raise your hand, and Richard gets one, okay? <coughs> Here, raise your hand, and she'll give you the a bag. Okay, who was wearing a tie that they received as a Father's Day gift? Anybody wearing a tie that they received as a Father's Day gift? Do we have anybody wearing a tie today? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next year not. you know better. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who is the youngest father present? That might be you, John. I don't know. Youngest father present. It's okay. John. John. Raise your hand, John, so Piper knows where to bring it. All there right. Go. Here's a fun one. Who has the oldest model car? It can be running or sitting in the garage. <laughs> so who has an old car? Come on. You guys, I know men have toys. Dan, you got one. What year is it? 1948. Anybody have one older? What is it? 1948 what? A Chevrolet what? Pickup. All right. Even though he's a Chevy guy, go give him a, a prize. <laughs> back to Dan Piper. Dan the back there. Okay. All right. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for each and every man in this room today. For the ways that they have guided and provided for their families. And Lord, there are some today who aren't a father yet, but they will be someday. Or they may end up being a wonderful role model to somebody. And I, I ask that you will bless their life as well. Our world is in need of, of strong men who are willing to boldly profess their faith regardless of whether they're going to be made fun of. So we give you thanks for each and every man in this room today. May they continue to be of service to you. Amen. So Piper, <clears throat> I see... You're going to help me. I'm, we're going to jump the gun a little bit. Oh, Pick them up you have the these. Back. Okay. Here. So, Sue, tell them about this. We just have a little gift for our men, our fathers. When you go leave the sanctuary, please stop by and mm -hmm. pick up one of your little key rings. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. So, why Piper's here, and before she goes to Jesus Junction... <coughs> She has a bag with her of oh, some loose, loose coin, right? And she's going to put it in the blessing jar. You're going to hear more about the blessing jar later. But this is a way that all of us can participate in sharing uh, our blessings uh, with this church so that we can bless others in return. So, Piper, you can just go ahead and put whatever you want in, in the blessings jar. And again, you'll hear more about that later. It was an idea that I came up with and I shared it with uh, uh, some of our leaders in the church and then I shared it on Tuesday evening uh, at our all church meeting as to why we're doing this. But I talk about it in my sermon. So I want to thank Piper for, uh, for leading the way. If a child can do it, we all can do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sue told me that they're going to like carrying all the 
clanking sound, so that was fun. I don't know if it's going to clank like that when it, when it gets fuller. It will? Okay. All right. At this time, the ushers will wait upon you for your tithes and your offerings and your prayer cards as well. remain standing for our next song. Anybody have some glory sightings to share this morning? Glory sightings. Hey, Tanya, tell me your name. I, you know, um, some people may not know you, so just tell me your name. So I'm you Tanya. Up, thank you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> how's that? Uh, my backyard is like a wonderful animal sanctuary to me.
But last night, my mom and I were sitting in the back porch, which is screened in, and the family behind us, as a family unit, they were outside playing baseball. And it just brought me so much joy to watch a family get together like that. It was the mom, the dad, and five kids, one little girl, and she kept up with all those boys. <laughs> One more. Here comes Shirley. My name is Shirley Moore. Um, yesterday, um, my daughter was planning to have a yard sale, and all of a sudden we just decided not to have it. And the thing about it being a God sighting is for the first time, and I can't remember when, my daughter and I got to sit and talk. And, and it was religion, uh, children, uh, family. Just It was just so good. And it was a, a whole afternoon, a whole afternoon of just getting down to some of the nitty gritty that we needed to talk about. And it was just... It, God makes moments for us, and we need to uh, be aware of them. And it was just, it was wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Thank you. So I have the list here from last week um, that I'll share with you, and then I'll share with you the cards that I received this morning. Uh, those who are either in the hospital or who are experiencing health issues. Let us continue to pray for Lynn Anderson and her sister Jude, for Terry Webb's student Brandon, who was hit by the truck, for Carol Lawyer, for Sean Yoakum. Uh, Sean is recovering from uh, the plane, a plane crash, for Fonda Dickerson, who has cancer, Mary Williams' daughter, Tammy, Rita Skeen's great-grandson, Layton, who was in a bicycle wreck, for Rita's son, uh, Tatum, and for uh, a church member, Barb Bergerson, she's having uh, some pain issues. Let us continue to remember those who are grieving. Shirley Morgan lost her uh, sister, and then uh, Jenny Jeffrey's father, Mel, uh, passed away a couple weeks ago. Also, our shut-ins uh, this week, I want to highlight uh, Hugh James and Bill Nichol Nicholson, that we can pray for uh, those two men and maybe send them a card. The cards that have come forward this morning, Brian and Joyce's nephew, uh, Joshua, is going to have his brain surgery on Tuesday. Prayers for Joanne's daughter, Kelly. Alex, help me out with the last name. 15-year-old with cancer. Derringer. Derringer. Alex Derringer, 15-year-old uh, with cancer. Can you get us an address or something? I don't know if you can, so we can send them a card. Uh, so we have a praise this morning. Leslie, her tests thus far have been good. So praise God. That came from Linda Schultz. And then prayers for uh, Daniel Beckendahl, for Glenn Kohler, who's going to have hip surgery, and for our dear sister Jan Webb. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning with, with all kinds of feelings, joy and celebration, appreciation for how you work in our life. And we also come today, Lord, just asking that we can feel your presence. Some of us are carrying pretty heavy burdens right now. 
And I pray, Lord, that, that they will feel your Holy Spirit. Lord, let them know that, that you are a God who, who listens and who is active in our life and that no prayer will go unheard of. I pray, Father, for our community and our world. I pray that a spirit of love will sweep through this land as never before. I pray that you will put this country back on the right track. I pray, God, that our children and our youth will come to know and respect and honor you, that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Because when all else fails, God, you are there. And your son made the greatest sacrifice for us by dying on the cross so that we might have life, life abundant. and eternal life as well. So be with us as we continue to worship. Be with us this week. I ask all of this in your name and through the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, O God, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I was thinking about Father's Day and Normally, I like to just lift up a man in the Bible. So I thought, hmm, who can I lift up today? And I was doing some research, and Jabez caught my attention. If you have your Bibles, you may want to open it up to First Chronicles, because just a little bit of background information would be helpful, but there's a verse that wasn't on the screen I'm going to talk about. It's not really important, just listen. It's very interesting, though. But this is, our scripture lesson is taken from First Chronicles, and if you look at the first nine chapters of First Chronicles, it consists of a bunch of genealogies. It's a bunch of names. Name after name after name after name. And it is boring. <laughs> There's about 600 names mentioned in this book. But in these chapters, the Israelites are being reminded of their ancestors and the blessings that they had received from God. So by using this long list of names, all these different genealogies, the writer of the book of Chronicles hopes to show how God has chosen Israel for a prominent role in history. He wanted to encourage those who had just returned from exile and were struggling to rebuild their ruined nation. So these genealogies help their surviving Jews to understand how God can move in their life and how God can use them that God was still on the move in their lives and as a nation. And they had been brought back to the promised land for a reason. God still has a purpose. God still has 
people. And he's going to use his people to fulfill his plan. So that is really the point of this in the first book of Chronicles, that God has a purpose and a people and that he will use both to fulfill his plan. So we come to chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, and we hear about a man named Jabez. And it's the only time in the Bible that he is mentioned. He's never mentioned again. And he gets singled out for what? For a prayer. For his prayer. Mike, it's up there on the screen. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Now, what you don't see on the screen are, is the verse before that. And in that verse, we learn two things about Jabez. It tells us that he was more honorable than his brothers. That's it. He was more honorable than his brothers. We don't know why, but he was more honorable than his brothers. And the second is this, and I'm not making it up, that his mother named him Jabez, which means pain. We don't know why his mother named him pain. Yeah, I laugh too. Perhaps his mother named him pain because of the childbirth uh, pain that she experienced. Maybe it was some type of emotional pain. We, we don't know. But imagine living with this name, with this label for the rest of your life. For the rest of the, your life, you're known as pain. I want to introduce you to my son, Pain. Now explain to me again how you got your name. Oh, here comes Pain again. Terry, you can text that, that when I'm preaching on. People might find that interesting. I mean, can you imagine what this kid went through and as an adult what he went through? But here's the point. He refused to let a label define him. So that got me thinking, maybe on Father's Day, you didn't have a very good dad. Maybe he called you all sorts of things and put labels on you. Jabez knew what it was like to be marked and to have a label on his back. But Jabez also said, I will not let this stop me or define me. This is not who I am. Even though my mother gave me this name, I know that I am so much more. Remember a couple weeks ago I preached on that God made us what? Wonderfully and fearfully, right? We're special in, in God's eyes. You are awesome, God wants the best for you. God created you in his image, and Jabez knew that, and so he begins to pray. And this prayer consists of two sentences. Count the words. There's 29 words up there. And the verse, first thing that he prays for, Mike, it's on the slide, he says, oh, Lord, bless me. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. God, because you have made me, because you want a relationship with me, because I am wonderful in your sight, God, bless me. Now, you might say, Pastor Andrea, that sounds a bit selfish. And I'm going to respond back. Do you think God is an amazing God? Do you think God loves you? Do you think he wants the best for you? Do we think he made you for a reason? 
do, do you affirm that when God created the world, he stepped back and said, and it was good? Do you believe God is the orchestrator in your life? So then why can't God bless you? God can and will, and he wants to bless you. God is a good, good father. It's interesting that some of the translations read, oh, that you would bless me indeed. In Hebrew, the word indeed is equivalent to us adding a bunch of exclamation marks. A bunch of exclamation marks need to go at the end of this sentence, like at least 50 of them. Come on. Jabez knows that he is praying to an awesome God. He has heard the stories from his ancestors. He understands that God is present and active in a person's life, in a nation's life. He knows that God isn't afraid to get in his business, in our business. Bless me, O oh Lord. Bless me, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. God, I want you to come down and be with me. Stoop down right here and extend your hand and favor to me. Bless me, God. So we call ourselves Christians, right? Do we believe in a gracious, a loving God? then why are we so afraid or bashful to ask God for his blessings? It's okay to do that. Ask God to bless you. Ask him to bless your marriage, to bless other relationships you may be in. Ask God to bless your health. Ask God to bless you in your schoolwork or career. Ask him to bless your children and grandchildren. Ask him to bless your future. Ask him to bless you with a right spouse. God wants to bless you. He is a God of abundance and not scarcity. Did you hear that? God is a God of abundance and not scarcity. Amen? Amen. Come on, church. Someone has said that God is not just a God of addition, but God is also a God of multiplication. God wants to shower us with exclamation points and multiply you with blessing upon blessing upon blessing. So, I want to ask you another question. What are you going to do with all those blessings? Are you going to keep them to yourself? Or are you going to share them? with others. Now, I'm not going to go down that path today because every one of you know that when you are blessed, when God blesses your life, you are to return a portion of it back to the Lord, whether it be through your time, your talents, or your finances. But as you have heard already this morning, on Tuesday evening at our all-church meeting, I ask that we begin to implement a, a blessings jar. It's over there by the piano. And why are we going to do this? Well, for several reasons. The first is that it, it allows us to thank God and show our appreciation to him for all the blessings in our life. Blessings that often we take for granted. But another reason, and I think the most important reason, is that it helps to create a natural mindset of giving. We give not because we have to, but because we, we want to. It, it comes natural to us. It fosters genera generosity and that this willingness, this desire to give back comes from, from our heart. Another reason I thought of is that this jar reminds us of the obligation that was placed upon this church 20 years ago 
when it was built. It reminds us that we, that you and I and our children need to be financially responsible and good stewards of God's house. We just can't close our eyes and ignore this financial responsibility. So every Sunday, the jar will be in the sanctuary for you to make a very simple contribution. You don't have to do it every week. You may give whatever you want. It could be 50 cents. It could be a dollar. It could be all the loose change that you've set aside during the week. Someone in our church had a birthday. And I was told that they decided to give a little extra because they recognize how God has blessed them through the years. So they gave however old they were. I can't wait till I get to put $61 in that jar in September. So maybe some of you today may want to thank the Lord for, for your father. Or maybe for another man in your life that became a role model. That jar is there for whatever you want it to be. And the only thing I ask is that you give out of joy and appreciation and you give from the heart. I want you to learn how to, how to give back to God and feel God every day. I want it to be natural. The next slide. Jabez prays that God will enlarge or expand his territory. Jabez knows the importance that land plays in our, his culture. It carries with it social status and power. As Jabez looks out over his land and sees the horizon, he knows that there is something more than the eye can see. And he begins to think, what if, Lord, you could use me in, in other ways? So he prays, Lord, bless me and expand my territory. Expand my influence. Lord, I, I want to move outside of these two, of these property lines, four property lines, whatever. I want to move outside of these property lines outside of my little box and I want to be an influence to you and for you. May the words and my actions go beyond the confines of these property lines. Because Lord, I know you are a God of blessings. I know you are a multiplier. Now, Jabez doesn't box God in and say, okay, Lord, well, I want, you're going to expand my territory, so I want this and this and this and this. No. He just simply prays, expand my territory. Make it bigger, Lord. He doesn't put any limits on God. He just simply asks God and trusts God to meet his needs, to use them. Hmm. That's amazing, isn't it? That is amazing, and can we pray like that? Can we pray like Jabez? Can we let God fill in the blanks for us? Can we trust God to do what is in our best interest? Can we take off the blinders and say, okay, God, now use me. Expand my territory. Expand your territory. 
So how can God use you? How can God use your story and the circumstances you have been in to advance his kingdom? God wants to use you. He wants to increase your influence so that you can advance his kingdom. God wants to use you and your life stories to tell others about Jesus and what it means to be a Christian. So as I was writing this sermon, I thought about some of the people in our church who are doing that right now. They are using their story, their experiences to help others. They are influencers, real-life people who are making a difference. They are way-makers who are leading people to Jesus Christ. But they are also Christians who struggle with their faith and who at times say, Lord, I believe, so be with me in those times that I don't believe, Lord. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. They know that life is hard and that living a Christian life can be hard, but kingdom people don't know all the answers. I don't know all the answers. But they know, and I know, that we can trust in a God that is so big that he can do anything. And they know that Jesus loves them. They know that Jesus died for them. And that is how that they navigate through this thing called life. Church, I know some of your stories. I know the territory that you have been in or are in. I look out and some of you are dealing with, with cancer or other major health issues. Some of you have dealt with addiction, whether it be drug or alcohol abuse, gambling or pornography. Some have dealt with or are dealing with depression, sexual abuse, broken marriages, autism. Some of you are estranged from family members. Some of you come from broken homes or some of you right now, especially if you're retired and you're getting older, you're, you're thinking, what is my sense of purpose in life. Some of you have experienced loss. And behind every one of these stories, I can pair you up with someone else who can tell you how they have weathered the storm. We need Christian influencers in our life because we can't go through life alone. Amen? So God is looking for every influencer he can use. Whether it be in the classroom, at work, at the gym, in the hair salon, around the kitchen table, in our homes, on college campus, as a caregiver, in a retirement home, or in our neighborhood, God needs you to be an influencer for him. He needs people who will say, God, use my life so that others will find you. The third slide, please. Jabez prays for God's presence. He says, let your hand be with me. You may recall that a couple of weeks ago I preached on Psalm 139 and I went verse by verse explaining each line. And then when I reached verse 5, I read this. You have laid your hand upon me. David writes, you have laid your hand upon me. And then I shared with you something very interesting that I had learned in my research that the Hebrew understanding of this word, of how God lays his hand upon us, relates specifically to the inside of the hand or the palm. This part of the hand requires you to take hold of something. Right? Take hold of something. 
to grip an, another person's hand. And we release, we can't, we, we can't do it like this. Remember I talked about the fist, we got to release it, right? And we got to lay hold of someone else's hand, of God's hand. And after the service, someone else reminded me that sometimes we raise those parts of our hand, what? In praise or petition to God. So Jabez prays that the hand of God will be upon him. You see, Jabez knows that he cannot do life alone, that he needs God's hand to direct and guide him. Isn't it funny? It's not funny, it's ironic, but I know it. it's how God works. If someone came and prayed for me this morning, because I have learned that when the hand of God is upon you, you can do amazing things. When you feel exhausted, God will give you strength. When you feel anxious, God will give you peace. When you feel lost, God will point you in the right direction. When you need, when your need needs to be met, God will make a way. I don't know what mountain you are facing right now. I don't know what valley you are in, but I do know that there is a God who loves you and promises to walk with the journey, with you in that journey. Now, you may not get what you want. You may not get what you want, but whatever the outcome, God will not desert you. You need to understand that God always has his hand upon you. And the last slide, Jabez prays for protection. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. You see, Jabez knows that if God blesses him and if God will use him to be an influencer, and because he is, God is present in his life, then what's going to happen? The enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So Jabez prays. The last thing he prays for is for God's protection. He knows the truth about spiritual warfare. That the enemy is always on the prey. 1 Peter 5 says to be on your guard and to stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. But you must resist the devil and stay strong in your faith. So now I want you to listen, church. If you start praying the prayer of Jabez and God starts pouring out his blessings upon you and you are becoming an influencer for him and you are mindful of his presence each and every day in your life, then I'm telling you, watch out. Satan is going to be mad and jealous and come after you. He has no other choice to do so. Why? Because you are interfering with his business. You see, if you can, if Satan can get you off track, then that means that he can get other people off track, the people you're trying to influence. So blessings, influence, God's presence, that all adds up to needing God's protection. And so I appreciate the prayer that was said over me this morning. Because I know that God is on the move And he is doing some amazing things here at this church and in this community. Miami Whitewater Community Church is making a difference in people's lives. We are touching the homeless and the poor. We are in our schools helping teachers and showing kids what Jesus is about. We go to the nursing homes and send cards to our shut-ins to let them know that they are loved 
and valuable. We were gifted with a mobile home, and we just gave it away to someone in need. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are kingdom people. We are influencers. We are way makers. And after Jabez prayed, what did God do? What did God do? He answered his prayer. God granted to the pain everything that he had asked for. This nobody, this nobody who is only listed one time in the Bible, he wasn't like Moses or Abraham or Noah or Solomon. Jabez was as ordinary as could be. But God took the time to listen to his prayer. So why is that so important? Why Jabez? Because you don't have to be super religious. You don't have to be popular. You don't have to be wealthy or have a lot of clout. Nope, you just have to ha have a humble heart, the faith the size of a mustard seed. And then you have to have the willingness to go and execute God's plan to expand his territory for his kingdom. So what would happen if everyone prayed this prayer? What would happen in your personal life? What might those blessings be? What would happen in our relationships? What would happen to this church and our ministries? What would happen in and among Harrison, Ohio? Folks, it's a simple prayer. It's, it has 29 words in it. But it is powerful. And the power comes from praying it. And I want to encourage you to say that prayer every day on the lanyards, on the back, it's marked blessing, influence, God's presence, protection. Four things you pray for. Four things. It takes you 10 seconds to pray it. You can say the prayer while you're driving in your car or as you are doing the laundry. Say it outside while you're cutting grass, or you're taking a walk, or you're working out in the gym. I don't care where you say it. I just want you to say it. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen? Amen. Where are the uh, lanyards? They're in the back. So when you leave, get one today. All right, um, I just want you to stay seated. And I picked this video. It's our closing song. It's called uh, Every Hour. I think, it, I think it's a good song for us to end with. If you know it, sing along. Otherwise, just enjoy the music and pay attention to the words.
carry it with me. Because, Christina, you said what? Jesus is there. So, folks, take the chair with you this week. Take Jabez's prayer with you this week. Jesus will bless you. He wants you to be an influencer. He wants to expand his territory. He's with us. And he will protect us. Amen? Amen. Amen. See you all next week.